Hi, my name is Martin. I'm a lecturer and PhD student at the Chair for Media Informatics at the University of Regensburg. And today I'm presenting the paper Flexing Muscles in Virtual Reality, Effects of Avatar's Muscular Appearance on Physical Performance. This paper is co-authored with Melanie Kloss, Valentin Schwind, Christian Wolf and Neil Sense. We know that VR can induce an illusory feeling of embodying the virtual avatar, the digital self-representation of the user in virtual environments. Through motion capturing, for example, we can transfer the user's motion onto the virtual skeleton of the avatar so that the user gets the feeling of acting through the avatar, of embodying the avatar and accepting it as the virtual alter ego. This phenomenon is known as the body ownership. Since VR can render the avatar in any desired style, the user can therefore embody any possible appearance, right? This virtual embodiment of avatars with characteristics that differ from the user's physical self can result in an effect known as the Proteus effect. Alluding to the versatility of the Greek god Proteus, who was said to be able to change his shape at will, the Proteus effect describes behavioral, attitudinal, and perceptual changes due to the embodiment of the virtual avatar and its salient characteristics. Previous work also found that the avatar customization can affect the user's performance while playing an immersive exit game. Overall, results from previous work suggest that the avatar's appearance can affect the user in exit games. However, these effects were only found in a competitive scenario where the users, for example, competed against an improved version of themselves. Thus, these effects cannot be considered in isolation from psychological mechanisms such as competition or even behavioral confirmation. For this reason, it remains unclear how the avatar's appearance affect the embodying user in virtual reality. That is why we were wondering whether the avatar's muscular appearance can affect the perception of effort and physical performance when being alone in a virtual environment. We tried to answer this question in a mixed design study with 30 participants with the two independent variables, the avatar's gender and the avatar's muscular appearance with three levels, non-muscular, medium and muscular. So the participants embodied avatars with different muscular appearance through visual motor synchrony, we induced the body ownership and the participants could perceive themselves through a virtual mirror from first person perspective. We measured the perceived exertion using the established box RPE scale, the rating of perceived exertion scale, ranging from 6 to 20, with 6 no exertion at all and 20 maximal exertion. So the participants have one weight of one kilogram in each hand for 60 seconds in a position at 90 degrees of shoulder abduction in the scapular plane and had to indicate the perception of effort in the last five seconds by orally communicating their current perception of effort from 6 to 20. Additionally, we measured the participants' hand grip strength using a force measurement device called dynamometer. We also assessed the just noticeable difference, the JND is a psychophysical measure that stands for the amount of a change in a stimulus to be detectable and noticeable. And we hypothesized that the avatar's appearance can affect the user's sensitivity towards changes in weight. So we applied the method of constant stimuli where the users were presented with a weight pairs with a constant weight of 200 grams and comparisons weights with 205, 210, 250, 20, and 225 grams. So the users had to um, lift the weights in succession and determine which of the two weights were heavier by virtually tapping a button on the table. We also surveyed the participants by integrating the questionnaires into VR and measured the presence, the sense of presence, the body ownership, and the self-perceived fitness as a manipulation check for the avatar's perceived fitness. Let's have a look at the results of the perceived exertion. We found a main effect of gender and body on the perceived exertion. The, a visual comparison of the means indicate a systematic relationship between the avatar's muscularity and the perception of effort during physical exertion. Considering the grip strength, we found a significant main effect between the gender and the body of the avatars. A subsequent pairwise comparison found a significant difference within the male avatars. So male participants at a higher grip strength with the muscular avatar compared to the medium avatar. 
Due to the number of samples and the exploratory nature of the JND task, we did not perform any inferential statistics but only provide descriptive statistics. Considering the average JNDs of the different avatars, we found that the participants in the muscular avatar had a lower JND, so were more sensitive toward changes in weight than in the medium and the non muscular avatar. Results suggest that there is a systematic relationship between avatars' muscular appearance and the perception of effort. We also found that muscular avatars can increase male participants' grip strength. However, we could not find this for female participants. We assume that this is due to gender differences in the body image, since women prefer a slimmer build and associate a slimmer build with physical fitness and men prefer a more muscular build. We argued that this should be considered during the avatar design process. Overall, results indicate that avatars which are perceived as physically fit and athletic can decrease the perception of effort. However, more research is needed to consolidate our findings since avatars' effects pose an opportunity for game designers to positively affect the user during physical exertion. With this, I conclude my talk and welcome your questions.